My name is Jen Lewin, and we're here in Boulder, Colorado at my studio. I have a project that's called The Pool. It's a giant interactive environment where people can play and move around, and their interaction creates these really wonderful swirling patterns of light in multiple platforms that are placed on the ground. How did you come up with this idea? I was camping in Australia, and I was camping in an area where there were hundreds of these small um, tidal pools and you could see the moon rose and you could actually see the reflection of the moon in all these tidal pools and we, a group of friends and, and myself, ran around and played in all these pools and it just was really beautiful. And I just wanted to recreate that experience of being able to play and have these puddles of light. The pool was originally created uh, as a grant for Burning Man. So it was first shown at Burning Man, and then went back the following year to Burning Man. And the interaction worked great. There were almost 100 plus people on it every night. Um, if anything, there were so many people, it was actually difficult to see what you were doing. So one of the things I've been doing is redesigning the piece to sort of still be intuitive when there's over 100 people interacting with it. When I first wrote The Pool, it was more of a game. So like Pong, if you leaned in a certain direction, it would shoot out light and that light would sort of bounce off of other people's. It was really fun if there were five people um, playing within the system. Again, it didn't really work when you had 100 people because it was just anarchy. So then I rewrote it again to be more like the ripples of a pool and it was a little bit better in a sense that um, people would create these wonderful swirls of color based on their movement. But again, you had 100 people on there and it was impossible to tell what anyone was doing. So I'm now actually trying the third system, which is more like a heat map, where you create these splashes, and people's splashes overwrite splashes, and I'm gonna be testing this out next weekend to see, what it works, see how it works. The pool is a very complicated piece because there's no single computer or router. Usually when people create a, a visual, like a graphic display, there's a computer that sends information like to pixels. In this case, I have 106 unique individual things, they're like organisms, and they each have a simple set of rules, and those rules have to propagate. So it's similar to something like cellular automation or to fractals where you're propagating a simple set of rules and you get these really wonderful complicated behaviors, patterns, but it's very hard to make that. And to keep it simple and to have this information pass and propagate through the system and actually come up with something that is still beautiful and interesting and intuitive for the user. So there's just been a lot of trial and error with this piece. Um, I love the fact that there is no central computer though. It's limiting but it's also really interesting because it's forced me to design a system that's actually been a little bit surprising and, and things have happened that I would never have expected. So this is one of the um, platforms in the pool. This plastic actually on the outside is a special plastic that is specific for LEDs. It's wonderful, it diffuses the light beautifully. Um, it was actually something that was created for large LED billboards, but we were able to get it. There's a base that's plastic. There's this sort of um, round circular piece in the center that covers up our sensors. We have just four simple FSR sensors that can sense sort of user placement and user weight distribution around this circle. Inside we have um, a, an Arduino, an XB, and a bunch of electronics to essentially drive a, a meter of LED strip which is placed on the outside. And then the entire thing is supported by a piece of PVC piping that we cut which actually is really strong and was a really simple way of creating a support structure that would hold hundreds of pounds. I'm originally an architect, but while I was um, studying architecture, I started to want to bas basically make things that moved and were a little bit more interactive. So all the buildings I designed adjusted and changed and shifted. And that sort of started me thinking about making sculpture that could move and maybe change based on light conditions. And the only way to do that was to learn electronics. So I taught myself. I had a um, background in computers, so the computer side of it was pretty easy for me. And I decided to sort of integrate all these things and I got a fellowship to go to NYU to study this idea of making physical objects that were interactive and could move and could change. And I just fell in love with it and I've been doing it ever since.